Hi, I'm Kristen Miskelly. I'm here today with Pacific Salmon Foundation and Satin Flower Nurseries. We're going to learn about a variety of native species that you can use in restoration projects for wetlands and shoreline habitat and how these plants can go on to inspire you to plant some in some of your own restoration projects. We're gonna take a little walk around the nursery. The species that we grow are all native to Southern Vancouver Island. We have beach pea here, which is a species of the back shore where you would see driftwood in sand ecosystems. And these beautiful purple flowers draw in large flying pollinators like native bumblebees. Oh, so we found some beach pea here. Like at the nursery, there's pods that are setting seed on this one and the beautiful purple flowers that bees will go to. And we saw a butterfly fly by a moment ago as well. In sand ecosystems, this native grass, Lamus mollis or dune wild rye, grasses are very important to a variety of local ecosystems, including wetlands and shoreline habitat and it's a very tall plant and forms a matrix that can help stabilize sands and grows around driftwood as well. And if you were in a rocky habitat on a shoreline, you might find this lovely plant called sea thrift or Armeria meridima, and it draws in bees and other pollinators to a cluster of flowers in the seed head. In salt marsh habitat, this Plantago meridima might be something you would see, and also rocky shorelines that experience salt spray. And it's waxy and thick leaf cuticle protect it from any harm that might be caused by salt. It's very tolerant. This plant is called coastal mugwort or coastal sage, and it's a native Artemisia species. So like all Artemisia, it's a very aromatic plant. So if you see this growing at a shoreline, you can rub the leaves and have a smell and you'll recognize its very distinctive odor. So springbank clover is one of our native clovers and it's a perennial species. And you can find it growing in salt marsh habitat. Springbank clover has thick rhizomatous roots that are much like a bean sprout. And once they're cleaned, they have a very nutty and watery texture to them and do have food traditions associated with them. And this book, Saanich Ethnobotany, is one of the books where some of that information is compiled and a wonderful resource if anyone wants to learn more. So this plant is often found growing with springbank clover. It's called Pacific silverweed. It's actually in the rose plant family and has lovely foliage and these bright yellow flowers that identify it as Pacific silverweed. Here's a nice clonal patch of Pacific silverweed. The bright yellow flowers are easy to spot and here in the winter, this would be with lots of standing water here. And as the water has drawn back through the season, this plant has had an opportunity to, to go on and flower. Henderson's checker mallow is a Sedulcia species that grows in salt marsh habitat. Uh, and estuaries and is a beautiful plant from the Malvasi plant family. You'll find it forming big clonal patches like you see here because it has uh, rhizomes and in these big patches when they're all blooming you'll see many different bees especially bumblebees coming and gathering nectar from the flowers and you will also see butterflies. So Western tiger swallowtails are an example of a butterfly that you'll see nectaring from these plants as well. 
Coastal slopes can be a challenge to revegetate, but it is possible. And there are a variety of native species that work particularly well for slope habitat, where you plant them in fall, they'll grow quickly to form patches of vegetation that will hold surficial soils during rainfall in the winter and then go on to provide pollinator forage and habitat into spring and summer. And the two species here that we're looking at, woolly sunflower with the yellow flowers and California brome are two examples of plants that work really well for coastal slopes. And they can withstand salt spray, wind, and even mild erosion. So Nootka Rose is just a phenomenal species. It's actually my favorite native plant and has lovely soft blossoms in springtime that form a landing pad for native bees that come to the flowers for the pollen. And it forms big patches of shrubbery that can help stabilize slopes and work as hedgerow plantings as well. And there are three native species to the island, one of, of rose, one of which is Nootka rose. There's also clustered rose that grows in wetland habitat. So if you have a spot where it's flooded through winter, that would be a good choice for you. And there's even a rose that grows in shade called bald hip rose. It's sometimes called woodland rose. But if you have a shady spot but would like to use a rose in a planting like that, that would be bald hip rose. Snowberry is a native plant from the honeysuckle family. It has very small flowers but have a big impact for pollinators. Bumblebees nectar on this very regularly and we'll see many native bees today that are using these small flowers. These shrubs form patches, they're rhizomatous or grow below ground and keep popping up into patches and can help stabilize soils and also form hedgerow plantings. Into the winter they form spherical white berries that are good forage for birds in the winter as well. In wetland ecosystems, native sedges, rushes, and grasses play a really important role in habitat structure and complexity that is important for wildlife and the functioning of those habitats. And inflated sedge is an example of a local sedge that you see in a variety of wetlands. We're also looking at dagger leafed rush and a meadow barley plant that's in front of us here. So here we are in a beautiful estuary showing a transition zone between freshwater systems like lakes and rivers and how they connect to saltwater systems, particularly the ocean. And these habitats are home to a variety of specialized plant species that can tolerate brackish waters that include salt and fresh water and have adaptations to be able to tolerate high salinity in water. In the spring, the vegetation that we see of mixed forbs and sedges and grasses will change in structure. So the sedges and grasses will get tall and these actually cast shade over different kinds of water courses that are part of the estuary and this shade helps facilitate Pacific juvenile salmon by casting the shade that helps cool the water and provides the appropriate temperature and habitat quality that the salmon need. And also the vegetation attracts insects that then drop into the water and this is what helps feed our Pacific juvenile salmon. Stewardship of local shoreline habitat is extremely important for local ecosystems and also supports local pollinators. Being able to include native species 
for your restoration projects will really help with supporting local restoration in the region as a whole, as well as supporting local pollinator communities. Thank you so much for visiting the nursery today. For anyone who's looking to learn more about native plants, there are so many local resources that you can take advantage of. So we're just one of them, but if you would like to learn more about us, Satinflower Nurseries, please visit our website at satinflower.ca. And there you'll find resources about native plants and wildlife and restoring places on Southern Vancouver Island.